Well, there it is, last night, extra mile arena. Time ticking down, Boise State celebrating Mountain West Championship, the first outright Mountain West Championship in school history, the second championship uh, conference regular season outright title in uh, since 1988 was the first one, this is the second. You see the scene, students making their way on the court. We'll see if we get into that whole debacle or not. But uh, what a scene last night at uh, Extra Mile Arena. Again, second time, first time since 1988, second time ever, Boise State outright conference champions. First time since they joined the Mountain West. A well-deserved party last night at Extra Mile Arena. 24 and six, the record now for Boise State. 15 and two in the Mountain West. And they're heading dancing. They're dancing on the court. They're going to be dancing in March. We uh, welcome you on into the Matt Bowser Show here at BroncoNationNews.com. BJ Reigns and Matt Bowser with you and dealing with some technical issues on the laptop. So sorry we're a few minutes late. But uh, Matt, uh, we saw you there courtside, saw you there celebrating. Uh, what, what a scene last night. Uh, you know, this this team has worked a, you know, a long time to get to this point. It's been seven years since their last time in the tournament. And obviously some some heartbreak along the way, some disappointment. But last night, man, in front of the home crowd to get to cut down the nets, uh, pretty pretty cool. It was incredible. And, you know, it's very fitting that it came down to the last four minutes of the game and they didn't score a basket. I mean, our defense time and time again has came through. When it, You know, in years past, when there's five minutes left, you don't know which way the ball is going to bounce. There's just this calmness and this confidence that if the game comes down to the last five minutes, they're not going to score very often on us, and we're going to come up with some huge plays, and it happened again on senior night. Look, the comments are rolling in here. Good morning, championship Wednesday. Mountain West champs, baby, let's go. Tanner saying can't wait for Vegas. Uh, Matt, you, you're one of the biggest supporters out there. I mean, you, you literally got ejected from a game trying to help uh, Boise State, uh, you know, win because you disagreed with a call. I mean, what, what you know – whether it's your uh, just just all the ways you support the program, what does this mean for for the alumni, for the former players, for someone that supports the program financially, like you do as well? I mean, it's got to be a, a pretty cool feeling to see all that uh, time and effort and money and, and everything over the last twenty whatever years uh, pay off on a night like last night. Yeah, it's fun getting messages from you know former Broncos and alumni and donors and uh, you know everybody in the family. You don't have to be a past player to be in the Bronco family. It's a, it's a really unique situation. You know, it's probably the best that the mountain West has ever been. And we're, we're 15 and two. We've won, we were 21 and two since we started the show. I mean, 21 and two. I mean, I don't know if Gonzaga has that good a record. So they put in so much time and they never get credit for it. The coaching staff, the traveling, the recruiting, the film, the two AMs. I mean, it's just countless and the players, you know, instead of going out and partying, they're getting up shots on a Friday night. And, you know, we don't see that. A lot of the fans don't see that. They just see the result. And it's easy to critique these 18 to 22-year-olds or the coaches and all that. But the athletic department, the marketing department, I mean, it takes an army. It really does. It's not one person or two people or even 50 people. It is an army of people who don't get the credit that can all celebrate this unique feat. I mean, you look at – I saw somebody posted, UNLV and Colorado State have been in the Mountain West – a lot longer than us. They have zero outright uh, championships in Mount West. I mean, that's how unique it is. Yep, yep. But, uh, you know, with, with this uh, comes the uh, other side of things, Matt, because uh, Nate says this team's coming for your team's win total. I want them. They're 24-6. and six. Saturday night, we're going to be at my house watching the game, and I, I want them to tie it at 25. 16-2 and two would probably be one of the best win percentages. Um, in Mountain West history. And to think that the two games we didn't play were New Mexico and San Jose State. I mean, you could chalk that up at 18 and two had we gotten the New Mexico game at home. I mean, that would have been a guaranteed win. And then San Jose State, if we could have got them a second time. So um, a lot to celebrate. And obviously we got to go to war on on Saturday, but um, I was going to wear my championship shirt I got last night. I was going to put that on today, but uh well, that's what Jordan did. Jordan said he wore his jersey to the office today. Car flag is staying up for who knows how long. Uh, you got uh, Nick Wade saying, just win, baby. <laughs> um, you know, Dakota said, let's go uh, win Saturday, sweep the tournament as well. And um, it's crazy, man. I know we, we talked about when we started the show, but, I mean, it was kind of uh, rock bottom right around that time. They were three and four. They had lost to Bakersfield. 
Um, you know, 39 points and you lose to a team that's like 275 at Ken Palm. I mean, that was just a, a rock bottom moment for this program, maybe for Leon's tenure, really, when you think about it, Matt. And you think about what they did. And he told the story last night how they went in the locker room and they drew every game they had left on the season on kind of like a ladder or the side of a mountain. And it looked like a lot of games. It looked daunting. And Leon went on there and wiped off every single game on there except the next game at the bottom, which was Tulsa. And when they won that game, then they wrote the next game on there. And they literally went one at a time. And Tyson Degenhart was one of the main guys writing them on there before practice each day on the whiteboard. And now they've got this whiteboard where, you know, they're running out of room because they've won so many games. And so just to see the turnaround, just to see the, you know, I, you know, I know Leon Rice was quick to hand the trophy, which we can watch the trophy presentation here in a second. I know uh, he was quick to hand the trophy right to Abu Kijab. I know when he got the net cut, he was quick to come down and hand the net off. But, I mean, I know for Leon, he's had his haters. He's had his detractors. He's had the social media critics that I think most of us rational fans realize were, were just the 1% trolls. Um, but, uh, you know, for him to uh, – you know, there was some pressure, I think, this year. You're three and four. The last couple of years hadn't gone the way you'd hoped. You have a new AD. You know, I think that um, this was kind of a crossroads for him at Boise State in this program, and, and I think that – the way they turn this around, I mean, this guy, he's going to earn a contract extension after the season now. I mean, you're going to hear his name popping up for other jobs probably. I mean, it's crazy. People were talking on the postgame show last night, Matt, about, uh, you know, ne naming it Leon Rice Court at some point. I mean, it's crazy when you think about what can change in three months, but um, it's pretty remarkable. And this team is heading to the tournament. And like I said, he, he, uh, he won't take a lot of the credit, but he deserves a lot of the credit. They do. I mean, if you think of the mental, and I can tell you as a player, you're three and four and you part ways with one of your most athletic players and you just lose that game and it's November 1st. As a coaching staff and as a player, the amount of anxiety and doubt and frustration and disappointment that's in your heart, you got two ways. You can fight like hell and give it everything you got and come together as a team or, you know, you can completely explode and fall apart. And they showed incredible heart. I mean, what they've done and how they've responded. And it's been pressure situation after. Pre I mean, the, the gauntlet they went through uh, five states in 10 days. And I mean, they became close. And then it showed the last five minutes. I mean, they took so much pride. They hit clutch shots. I mean, Shaver, I don't know if they'll ever be another clutch player in the Mountain West history that's hit more big shots than Shaver. And then you got, you know, all the other guys. You know, somebody was saying we might not have a first teamer this year. That shows how much heart they have that, you know, I would take our whole team as the second team and stack them up against all those first teamers any day of the week. Yeah, they, they don't have the the one guy averaging 20 points a game or whatever, but they've got the the four or five that if any one of them was gone, it would be a huge loss. And so, uh, I, well, you know, we'll see. Usually the first – the team that wins the outright title gets somebody on the first team, but, you know, maybe Shaver and Acot – or Shaver and Kijab split boats and maybe they're both on the second team. And, you know, a guy like Tyson Degenhart or Acot have to be considered for third team. And I think yep. it's clear that uh, you're going to have the freshman of the year be Degenhart. And I, I still think there's a little um, – a little bit of, uh, you know, debate, I guess, on coach of the year. I think, you know, Leon, obviously, they were picked fourth. They finished first. They'll be the outright champions in a league this tough by two games. He'd, he'd have my vote or he will have my vote. But I, I do think, you know, Wyoming, at least as of now, now if they lose tonight, if they lose Saturday, if they finish in fourth place, that changes. But if Wyoming were to finish in second, to go from eighth to second, I think Jeff Linder does deserve a lot of credit. But uh, the last couple of weeks with what Boise State's done to pull ahead, I think Leon deserves a uh, – you know, a, a lot. And um, I love Paul, Jeff. Linder. I, think, I think Jeff Linder's done an amazing job. He has two of the best players in the conference and he's done a hell of a job with those guys, but the coach of the year unanimously should be Leon Rice. I mean, yep, you went league outright here and you had the toughest schedule. To me, there's no debate. And most people in Boise probably won't say that. We'll see uh, you know, here in a couple of days how they decide to vote. The fans that didn't go this year missed out. What do you think of the atmosphere last night, Matt? It was a 11,900 and something was the announced crowd, and it kept filling in. It was like people off the streets were just walking in because that third level at tip-off wasn't full. But by, by the time the game got going and you're kind of at like the early part of the second half, I mean, it was hard to find an empty seat in the entire arena. I mean, it was electric last night. It was electric. I mean, the people were just piling in and sometimes the electronic takes a little longer to click. I mean, we even saw that at the Lakers Blazers game that if they could get that click, you know, as quick as a ticket, they could get people through the line quicker. But I'm sure they're going to try to make a lot of processes more smooth and better for the fans next year. 
is everybody's buzzing. I mean, this whole town is buzzing on basketball. Everybody's already talking about season tickets next year. Where are we going in the tournament? I mean, I always like playing the what if. Can you imagine we're we're sitting there with the championship on Saturday? We're 28 and six. I mean, we're talking a potential four or five seed. Yeah. You just you wonder what they're going to do the selection show with the in there. If you wonder, maybe they try to do something with the fans this year on the court. You know, out an extra mile since you're, you know, they haven't been in this position where they know they're in the tournament. So I wonder if they do try to maybe do something different for the watch party on Selection Sunday. We'll see. And, and, um, but that's the best part about the tournament in Vegas. What happens really doesn't matter. Maybe you can improve your seed and help yourself, but. I can't. It seems like every year they go down there. Oh, they got can't lose this game, or they got to win this game to have a chance. And now, yeah. you know what? Would it be the end of the world if they lost to Nevada in the first round? No. I mean, would it suck? Yes. But like, you're you're going to the big dance. You're going to be a seven eight seed no matter what. And it's like, you know what? Just enjoy this. And I think I think Saturday's gravy. Colorado State. It's a quad one game. You don't need it. You're not penalized if you don't get it. But as someone's saying here, if you find a way to get it, you know Jerry Palm still actually has Colorado State two seeds higher then Boise State on the seed line. He has Colorado State as a six, Boise State as an eight. So you're fighting for your seed, um, but you're, you know, I, I wouldn't expect to see Abu Kijab play 38 minutes in that game, Matt. I mean, I, I'm not saying you're not trying to win, but I think you, you know, get some other guys in the game. I think you do what you can, but I think you, you know, gear up for uh, for Vegas on Thursday. And um, I'll tell you what, I've talked to a lot of people going to Vegas. It seems like this year, if you're ever going to go, this is the year. It does sound like, Boise State's uh, Bronco Nation is going to have a nice contingent down there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think they're going to put the. I think they're going to try to try to win, and I think they're going to go in there. You know, they don't really have much to lose except for maybe a seed or two. But obviously, Thursday's the big day of next week. But I think, I mean, they're going to ride this momentum, and they're going to play, and they're going to play well. I think, and it's sold out at Colorado State. Colorado State needs to win the game to get the two seed. Um, yep. And you know, it's crazy how good the seeding is. I mean. I don't even know who we'll have as the as the winner of that eight eight eleven game, but um, noon on Thursday eight nine eight nine, which it's the eight nine game, which right now is looking like it'll be either Nevada again or New Mexico. So they may have to turn around and play Nevada right again. Your your reward for winning the title, and you know, I guess the, the game itself we haven't really touched on, but 73-67, 23 points from Kijab, sixteen each from Shaver and Acod, and um, you know it was kind of a back and forth game. They were up by six at halftime, extended the lead to thirteen, I think it was, or twelve in the second half. You had back to back huge threes from Degenhart. You had the play where I think Degenhart tipped it back from out of bounds, and Najee Smith put it in. And at that point, the crowd could kind of feel it, and you just could tell that you thought the last ten minutes was going to be a coronation, a, a party, a celebration. But Nevada had other plans, and they didn't go away, and they cut it to one point on numerous occasions. And then uh, Kijab had a couple big buckets in the final few minutes. Acott had a big jumper from the elbow. Um, and, and they just, you know, as you said, what they've done pretty much every game this season, when it's a tight game in the last three or four minutes, they get a couple big stops. They make a couple big buckets. And um, I think it was actually kind of more exciting for the fans and stuff that it was a little tight there at the end because it made that – energy and that atmosphere. Leon Rice called it the loudest he's ever heard extra mile arena when there was, I think, a missed shot and then a foul or something. And all the fans were pumping, or all the players were pumping up the crowd with about a minute to go. Um, it was a, a tough, tough battle. Nevada's a decent team, Matt, and, and they gave them everything they wanted last night. I mean, you look at, you talk about Nevada being an eight seed. When they got three players, they're going to make a lot of money playing professional basketball somewhere. And then they got Steve Alford, you mean the former New Mexico, you know, extreme success and at UCLA. I mean, it's, it's crazy to talk about Nevada and the talent they have as an eight seed. I mean, it's, yep. it's scary. It's mind blowing. Well, here was the uh, scene of the game. The filthy presentation. Matt Boucher is probably out there uh, somewhere. I saw you on the court, Matt, having some fun too. But uh, we got the championship shirts. They're going around Commissioner Craig Thompson. It took a while to get to this point because all the players were out there celebrating, but you've got Jeremiah Dickey, you've got Leon Rice, and I thought it was pretty cool, Matt, that the Commissioner of the Mountain West, Craig Thompson, wanted to come to Boise and present the trophy last night. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. They had the foul, the confetti ready, and Craig flew in, you know, the goosebumps started flaring. And there comes the confetti. Boise State, Mountain West champions. What about a moment like that for Abu Kijab? You think about him coming from Oregon, Matt, and, and just not knowing and ending up as a thousand point scorer for his career. And last night on senior night in that Fresno game with, you know, a thousand fans or whatever in the stands, he, he uh, 
has the, the torn labrum in his shoulder, and then Boise State has the upset loss in that game to Fresno. They missed the tournament, then he misses the uh, you know other tournament. Um, you know, what, what do you make of uh, a moment like that for a guy like uh, Robert Kijab? Didn't know if he'd get another senior night, but he came back, and obviously uh, it paid off for him and the team. Yeah, I mean, Oregon didn't work out the way he wanted to, but when one door closes, another door opens, and I think it was the, the perfect fit. Um, and he's a better person than he is a basketball player, too, so it could happen to a better guy. You see Case and Pryor, all the players uh, cutting down the nets. Um, that's a pretty cool feeling, right, Matt? No one can ever take you that from you when you have that piece of net and that memory. Nope, you're going in the record books, and uh, I'm hoping that they're going to go in the record books with multiple, multiple accolades. Um, don't want to get the cart too much in front of the horse, but I think the sky's the limit. I would not want to see this team. If, if I had, if I drew them, I would not want to see this team. And it's just crazy, Matt. We've had so many years where you just, at the end of the season, are you know, they're so close and you were thinking they could put it together and they're just one win away or one call away or they run into a hot Sam Merrill from Utah State or a hot, you know, whoever. But uh, just just to finally put it all together this year and just, you know, I think people are finally can finally say that this team really truly is different and they're Mountain West champs, man. And, and Leon was talking about it last night. You think about how hard this league is. You talked about them have you know not having to play uh, San Jose or uh, New Mexico in the second game. That that um, you know you, when you put it like that, as Abu Kijab you know walks up the uh, walks up the net here, you know they had the hardest schedule in the Mountain West. The two teams they didn't play the second time were the ninth ninth place team and the eleventh place team. So they in one of the hardest years in the Mountain West ever, they had the hardest schedule, and they're fifteen and two. And and uh, again, they're not going to have to sweat out selection Sunday. They're going to have to find out if they're a five, six, seven, or eight seed. It's, it's pretty amazing. It really is. And I mean, this shows how good the league is. The only game tonight is Wyoming goes to Vegas to play UNLV. UNLV is a favorite in that game. So, I mean, it's a bloodbath of a league and we went through it and we succeeded. And, you know, Saturday is going to be fun. I, I think there'd be no better fitting end than us win that game and, you know, cap it off at 25 and six going into the Mountain West tournament. A lot of uh, great comments here as we get ready to wrap this up. Uh, let's see, this team is something else. Would not surprise if they make a, if they run the table here through the Mountain West tournament. Um, Cole saying parking was a little bit of an issue. So many fans, I guess, trying to get in. That's maybe why it took a little longer. Uh, Josh saying loudest. I've heard the arena in a long time. Uh, Scott Stewart says he met a guy outside that was visiting from Jacksonville, Florida, and just ended up going inside for the game. Um, Derek saying uh, louder in that arena than it gets uh, in Albertson Stadium. Um, ears were ringing last night. Uh, David Gardner, a big supporter of Bronco Nation News, giving Matt the uh, thank you for supporting the program. It was fun to see the former players, Nick Duncan, uh, get honored there uh, as well. We saw Andy Avalos there sitting behind you, Matt, kind of in the corner wearing a – Custom made, I guess, uh, Bronco oh. jersey with his number 40 that he wore when he played here. Um, you know, uh, it, it was just kind of a cool night. And again, by the end of the game, there wasn't an open seat. Uh, is Kijab's number of 20 plus games a program record? I have to look into that. Don't know the answer to that. Um, this team won't let Nevada send them home in Mountain West tournament in back to back years. No way. Um, it, uh, it's got a, a chance to be. Like I said, man, I think people before for Vegas were going to Vegas just to have fun and hopefully see a game or two. But, you know, I know a lot of people that are having to make plans to stay through Saturday. I mean, they're expecting this to be down there for a couple of days. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. And it's uh, it is a really unique experience that we need to soak up and everybody needs to really, you know, cherish the moment and realize how special this team is because it's going to be, you know, it's going to be over before we know it. And I know you're close with Leon Rice. And as we kind of wrap this up, I, I want to show, you know, Leon cutting down the nets because this is a moment for him that, uh, as I said, you know, Matt, the detractors, the the, the haters out there, you know, it's, and, and all the frustration and disappointment. He's been disappointed himself maybe that the last couple of years haven't gone the way he wanted. But to see him right there on that ladder, that smile on his face, that fist pump as he hoists up the trophy or the uh, net, what, what, what's, what, what are your emotions like, I guess, seeing, seeing these, you know, that shot of Leon? I think of him pacing outside at 11, 12 o'clock with recruits and trying to get scouting and film and those guys constantly staying up and trying to get these players in the best position they can and developing them and 
thinking of Abu when he got here on campus and had to sit out that year, how much better he's gotten and how much better ACOT's gotten and how much better Shaver's gotten for me when he came from Portland. Uh, they develop guys. They develop them really, really well. Um, like RJ Keene, you know, he's not, he's a guy no one even knows. That could be the next Jessup. I mean, those are the guys we got in line, ready to go, ready for their opportunity. Yeah. Um, and they're buying in and they know if you put in the work, you know, there's, there's big payoffs and we're going to have probably the best recruiting class Boise State's had in history. I mean, there's a lot of momentum going our way. Well, hey, if you see at the bottom of the screen there, BNN Champs 45, uh, shameless plug here, running a special uh, at BroncoNationNews.com in honor of the championship. If you're on the fence considering a subscription, $45. That's a $25 discount. Uh, so uh, just BNN Champs 25 or uh, 22, BNN Champs 22 gets you a $25 uh, discount. So only 45 bucks for a full year. Hopefully you'll consider that at BroncoNationNews.com. Uh, uh, we got to keep keep paying Matt's big, big high salary here. So uh, help us out with 45 <laughs> bucks. So we, we appreciate it. Matt, always a pleasure. I know you're going to be going down to Vegas, right? Looking forward to this. And um, it's, it's a fun ride, but it, it seems like there's a, a couple uh you know, good weeks ahead. And so uh, we'll, we'll focus on basketball right now, but hopefully folks will, when they're ready to buy or sell that next home, reach out to Bowser real estate, the uh, Amherst Madison real estate advisors group, just Bowser and so, uh, again, hopefully um, you keep selling some houses. Hopefully the team keeps winning. And let's make this a, a memorable month of March here in Boise, Idaho. March Madness, best month of the year. Let's go. Appreciate it, man. We'll, we'll see you. Matt Bowser again, Bowser Real Estate. Uh, appreciate his support of the show. And appreciate all of you for checking this out. I think we're at a record here, Matt, for uh, views for the Matt Bowser Show. Um, people still celebrate in the morning after a title. So the comments are still uh, rolling in. And the final one, uh, we'll just say thanks for the amazing coverage, guys, for the unforgettable season. Thanks, and as Terry Matt. sums it up, time to win in the big dance. Appreciate it, Matt. We'll talk to you later. Matt Bowser, awesome. Bowser Real Estate. Take Come care, guys. Bronco Nation News, Bronco